Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. Well, it's only been about a week or so since the Monster Hunter event wrapped up, but there has been a ton of news in Dragalia Lost this week, and today's video is to kind of catch up on everything that I have missed covering since the Monster Hunter event ended. I have been Keeping up with Dragalia Lost, playing it during the week, just doing my dailies and whatnot, but I haven't had as much time to record videos or check out the content until this weekend, so I actually went ahead and caught up on things like the Mercurial Gauntlet, which I'm showing now, as well as the new chapter of the campaign, which I'll be discussing toward the end of this video in case you want to avoid spoilers. But in between the campaign, the Gauntlet update, we also got news of a version update coming out with some pretty nice quality of life features. We have multiple new banners now, including a dragon special that has started. There's lots going on, and at the time I'm recording this, we also found out that we now have confirmed a light Agito boss. The Ebon Chimera released this week, a Shadow Element Chimera, and it made it seem very likely that we would be getting a light element Agito boss. But it is now confirmed, definitive, there's no question about it. We don't know what the mechanics will be just yet, but it's coming out uh, next Friday on February 28th. So I'm pretty pumped that we're getting more endgame content, and this was a really rich period for the game, even though the Valentine's Confections event is mostly a rerun, there were still some nice new elements like the floor story I thought was quite cute. And in the end, the Valentine's messages themselves were very, very simple. Uh, nothing to really write home about, just one or two lines of text, essentially. But extra rewards never hurt anyone. It's fun to uh, get to read those and so on. But it was kind of a lull period. It's kind of a slower period. But I feel like they've done a good job at padding this time out. There's catch-up campaign endeavors, void endeavors. So I feel like I've had plenty to do in the game, and the onslaught of news has certainly contributed to that feeling as well. Alright, so just wanted to show off my Mercurial Gauntlet clear of level 60. Now that that's over, we're going to go ahead and hop into the main menu of the game. I recorded that at a later time just to show all of the things that have happened since then, and we will kind of skim through them. I'll give some thoughts on each thing. So as you can see, I have cleared the Mercurial Gauntlet. 280. Um, I had cleared everything else through 55 a couple months ago and uh, was feeling like the gauntlet was in a bit of a drought period. Thankfully, level 60 for wind wasn't too bad. Uh, not a fully decked out team for sure, but here we go. Now we are in the main menu of the game. Just enjoying the scenery here. Campfire setting, bonding, familial vibes in the Halidom. But let's head into the menu. We had Astral Raids this weekend. Kai Yan is the name of our new Light Agito boss. And it's quite interesting, the description here. It says that Kai Yan opposes things like coexistence and peace and feels that that leads to stagnation. So this is going to be a very different type of personality compared to Volk. Volk was all about the privilege trampling the underprivileged. It sounds like Cayenne is about war and peace, and I saw a cool Reddit post that I'll link in the description that basically suggests that all of these Agito bosses tried to run opposite the elemental characters in the main cast. So I think that that's kind of cool. Seems likely so far, since Luca is all about coexistence. All right, so we got this dragon special banner. Honestly, pretty solid banner, Apollo, Siren, Shinobi, but with the amount of limited banners going on right now, uh, I would say save your resources, probably want to spend them on Valentine's Day or just save them for the future. Then we have chapter 12 here. We have our new void battles as well. So let's take a look at these. It's really just the Ebon Chimera, but from the Aeolian Phantom, you can now craft some new weapons that are basically the Frenzy Res and I think Overgrowth res, something like that. They're supposedly effective against the Ebon Chimera, and they are in the light element, but you really don't need them at all, so it's not necessary to craft them. They're fine, they're solid. If you have only weaker weapons available, you're working your way up toward things like the high dragon weapons, then sure, 
probably a good intermediate weapon to have, but if you already have tier 2 high dragon weapons, you're probably good. Okay, what else do we have? Gotta kind of scroll down a bit, but there is the version update. So let's take a look at this. A lot of this is cosmetic, but the first thing is being able to set the autoplay, game speed, and uh, repeat functions before the match. That's always nice because it auto battle right now carries over across different modes. Second thing is you can choose when to spend your weekly bonus. This is huge for High Dragon Trials and Agito, presumably when the next one comes out. The third thing is a cosmetic change with little icons linking you around and uh, link to the treasure trade. That's pretty cool. That might make it easier to navigate for dailies. Then we get details on the advanced dragon trials. That's something that's been promised and they are complicated enough that I do wonder what they're going to include in that. A minimal mode for those who need to save on space, and the game has become quite big lately. And lastly, we're going to have more time in Volk's Wrath. So I think that that is another, I guess you could say like another not module or not, what is the word I'm looking for? Toggle uh, of difficulty. So not only can they add revive to things, but they can also expand the time limit. And that should make that trial easier. Although if you're running under time in Expert, you're gonna encounter more difficult sections of the battle. But now I wanna spend the rest of the video talking about the story. I'm going to show off the boss fight of the story, the final boss in this chapter on very hard difficulty. So if you don't wanna be spoiled on anything in the story, this is your time to check out. I've tried to move along at a good pace here, cover what we've heard and found out this week, but this is my discussion of chapter 12. So this was certainly the highlight for me this week amidst the reruns. It's also very nice that they made chapter 12 available for the first time at no stamina cost and story content in general at half stamina cost right now. Makes it a really good time to complete hard and very hard and especially with Valentine's Confections running, you're going to be getting materials for that that you can use in the treasure trade anyway. So it was a fun ordeal playing through the story. Pretty easy this time around, but like normal with very hard, the boss fights do present a challenge and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of players choose to take these on in co-op. This chapter really escalated the main arc of the game and I was very impressed with that. One of my concerns or complaints, I guess, with chapter 11 was I feel like chapter 11 had a filler arc vibe. The androids and the discussion of this maestro character seemingly came out of nowhere and I really thought they were going somewhere more in depth with it, with Mega Man coming into the game. Back then, I really didn't know. I thought the Agito bosses might be androids themselves. So I thought maybe we're going in a sci-fi direction. We had these cube fights that kind of hinted at that. And now, having experienced chapter 12, I feel like my initial suspicions or feelings toward chapter 11 are somewhat validated in that it feels even more like a filler arc that just wasn't really paid off on. Uh, Lakshi had one line, like exactly one line in chapter 12, and it was not really consequential at all. So perhaps she'll play a role later on in the story and they'll revisit the topic of Maestro. But I really think chapter 11 could have been better spent and still served as a springboard for Luca's character had we spent that time talking about the relationship with the Sylvans. Because one of the most interesting twists in chapter 12 is that when the odds are against the prince and the crew from the Halidom, the Sylvans from Luca's village and then Lara Noah's village actually come to save the day and Cerise makes an appearance. So I really think if we had spent chapter 11, you know, setting up the Sylvans, our relationship, how we expanded our dominion by forging a good relationship with them and their connection to mana, nature, dragons, I think that would have made a lot more sense in terms of the story, because as things were, I do feel like the Sylvan stuff just came out of nowhere. But that said, I was happy to see them make an appearance and maybe they'll retroactively explore that linkage. It's cool that something that really started with like a seasonal event, the Easter event, where we got a real in-depth look at Sylvan culture actually translated into the main campaign. So I do think that was a pretty cool highlight and honestly just getting to see Leonidas' motivations 
I just love this chapter because it brought us back to the main action and the main cast of the game. I feel like chapter 11, while people really liked Mascula and Luca fans really liked it, I felt like it was too much of a diversion. And the chapter 11 interlude did a little bit to help that with our look at what Ferris was up to. But ultimately, the only consequence I felt of chapter 11 was for some reason we have a new party member. Um, and maybe they just wanted to give us a new party member, maybe they're going to develop that further. There's references in Gala Luca's character to things like the Roken. Perhaps the Roken have some contribution to the creation of androids. Maybe Maestro was a Roken or something like that. But this chapter focused so much on Leonidas, his motivations, how he views the world, and why he sides with Morsayati. And the introduction of the Phobos and Deimos units was a pretty cool touch, and it felt quite menacing. I will say, one of the most ridiculous things, which is a consistent theme in the game, is every time you're about to battle something cool, or like a cool story beat happens, it feels like the boss fights tend to under underdeliver. So the first time that the Phobos units were introduced in the story, the battle chapter right after that, you go into it, you're about to fight the boss, and who is the boss but a random squirrel with a helmet, that squirrel enemy. And sure, you beat that, and then the next battle is actually against a Phobos unit. But it just feels like the presence of these fiends and these random enemies does not make sense at times. I definitely would prefer if we just fought all Imperial soldiers, like from the Imperial Onslaught as the boss fights, if that's the content or the context that we're in. Um, and sure, when we get to the Deimos units, then it would make sense to be fighting random fiends who are super powerful, but ultimately that's a very small complaint in an otherwise really cool chapter. Got another cube fight. I am getting a little bit tired of the cubes, but hopefully the payoff will be good, and it does seem like at this point they're likely to just round out the elements. I haven't looked into the um, code breaking of the new cube, so I'm not exactly sure what it references. But the biggest thing in this chapter for me, and the note that I will close us on, is I am super excited about the introduction of the Void Dragons and to see what Ferris is up to. I'm pretty pumped about what comes in the interlude and then chapter 13. Alex, I feel after seeing that story, is definitely a lock as the next Gala unit. But that's all the time I have for today, folks. So thank you so much for watching. Take care. Let me know what you thought about the story and all the recent updates in the comments below. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.